today let's talk a little bit about consumer and producer driven contract testing uh that will short one uh, uh to 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 speak about today but kind of uh, interesting if you didn't hear about that so if if you go and look at the title so uh that will tell you to nothing uh but the agenda could be like this like first let's say uh if you hear if you heard about testing pyramid and then let's check some implementation ways that uh are doing the contract testing that is packed and that is spring cloud contract and then if you have some questions just let me know or you can interrupt me at any time if you have any question so what is a test pyramid um you all ever know that what is a unit what's integration and what the ETUI tests and for optimal effect you should have really uh much more level low level unit tests neither the high level end to end tests and probably you know why because like you see if you have a really small environment small project with a couple of microservices or even one it's fine you can write a couple of integration tests and everything will be covered but what if you say what say if you have 10 20 or even more and each service connects uh, somehow and needs somehow other services so you see uh, that is the the picture you could have in in a daily on a daily basis uh life and that's the hell of testing pyramid the e tests are as you know they are pretty heavy weighted they are slow they are hard to support and keep uh, up to date and you you know that e e e tests are like the tests that you use to test the functionality and performance of your application on the the product like circumstances you you're trying to replicate the live settings uh, and you're trying to simulate what a real user will uh, look like from the beginning to the finish and of course it's there are pros and cons and you, you you see that uh it's really hard to keep in mind that intuit tests uh are the best solution you could have to uh see and know your platform is going well and nothing no regression is caused by any changes but it's hard right and to the to rescue that the contract testing uh, came so what's that um with contract testing you are testing only the contract agreements between between the consumer and provider what does it mean it's like you have let's say some login service and you have let's say user service and the login in service consume the consumes the api of uh, the user service and with contract testing you don't need any uh, uh, servers or containers or anything else to to test the how or if consumer properly uses api of the provider and if nothing had changed or something like that so 
if we are talking about consumer driven contract testing, then uh, we are talking as an example about PACT. And PACT provides you an implementation of that. So briefly speaking, the contract testing, uh, consumer driven testing, the difference is uh, between uh, E2E and contract and consumer driven is that uh, this one uh, is for this one, the primary goal is to test each system independently, each service independently from each other. And this same like a contract you see in the middle, that's the thing that is generated by code, meaning that the, the contract is um, almost always keep, uh, keep up to date with reality. They are fast because you don't need to uh, deploy the in your Kubernetes if you are talking about some uh, uh, microservice architecture, uh, a real scenario, a, a real uh, uh, spin up new pods with for other services that let's say consumer uh, consumes, you uh, they are easier to, to maintain because uh, you don't need to understand the whole domain of other provider services. Uh, of course, yeah, and they are really pretty easily uh, to uh, to fix and debug because you almost uh, see instantly where it happened. You see the line of code and you, you, you don't, you, you see which endpoint of which uh, provider service uh, failed. So what's the pact, how you, you can use it. In fact, um, uh, I'll, there'll be links uh, in our uh, GitLab and a GitHub uh, with examples you can uh, play with. I'm not sure it uh, because of lack of the time how how it looks like and how it uh, work, but it's pretty easy busy. You can just uh, spin up the uh, two services and play with Pact as it as it is. How you can uh, leverage the Pact in your uh, de uh, deployment process you have in your project. So uh, how let's let's do it step by step. So you you see that if um, uh, we are talking the let's say two services, consumer and provider services, uh, the in the the major point in consumer driven contract testing is that consumer humor introduced all changes. He, has, he drives the changes that uh, to the provider's API. It sounds a little bit uh, tricky, but, but uh, you will understand like uh, the difference between provider and consumer. So in consumer, like back, the, as I said, consumer drives all changes. He is the initiator. So let's say, Consumer introduces some new change. He uses the consumer service uses the provider service API, and consumer needs, let's say, some uh, update in the provider API. Yeah, provider doesn't know what what it is, but consumer needs something. Some let's say new field. Then uh, the team on that is writing consumer service API. Uh, introduces that change, then the code, they will generate a pact. A pact is just a file or a groovy or a YAML file that will be pushed to the pact broker. And the pact broker is a middle layer between provider and consumer. That thing is just another, service, another middle layer that will keep consumer and provider uh, they, they, uh, in sync. So 
that the pact will lay in the broker side. After that, provider is notified about the new pact that consumer generated. So let's say, uh, uh, and then the if everything is okay and provider service uh, told that uh, okay, uh, you need a new file. Let's make it in new field. You let's make it. Uh, then the team on the provider side did changes, deployed their service, and consumer was uh, notified that everything is okay. They can deploy their uh, changes, their, their their service with a new. Uh, with a new contract uh, or vice versa, let's say that, that consumer doesn't uh, uh, have anything in mind to change in the in the contract, but provider introduced some new change. Let's add, let's say they add, they added or removed. They they did remove some field, and they need to notify somehow uh, all consumers there could be a lot of them that such change had happened. So then uh, the provider team let's remove the, the field from the API and then they push their changes to the master. And they tried, when they tried to deploy that, that it fails because uh, the current version of their their API doesn't yet exist in the pact, so there is no uh, uh, contract. No consumer agreed with the such new contract. So then, the uh, it, it means all consumers are notified about that, and the notification is made by the web hooks on the broker side on the pact broker side. All consumers are notified and they are updating their change, their code to no longer require that field. They are removing that from the contract, push all pushes all changes to the pack broker. And uh, uh, then the, 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 that pushing triggers the web hook to execute the provider contract test. And that tests are uh, uh, the, the consumer team uh, informs the provider team that they have removed that, and provider team starts to uh, deployment to uh, to deploy the job again, and that uh, then uh, the, 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 that passes because the contract test triggered by the uh, consumers also passed. And provider could deploy their changes, their service with a new version as well. So, um, in a uh, that's that's packed uh, deployment process. You you'll try with to work with. So, what are the uh, pros and cons of packed of consumer driven contact testing? So you, um, the best option, the best thing that you could see in this is that um, I'm I'm speaking about consumer, not just contract testing at all, uh, at the whole. Uh, as a consumer do your testing, you will uh, uh, following this scenario. You will see that uh, the feedback of the quality of your API is really much, much shorter because you are uh, agreeing and discussing on the early stage uh, what changes are necessary and what are not. And you, for example, there, there are a lot of cases when your API is outstanding. And you, in this case, you will really, uh, need, need less communication uh, with other services and other clients who uses your API to find out if 
that some field is still uh, necessary in your API in your response. So, so that your API is really clean and neat. And also there is uh, no single view of uh, what, so that's the best way, uh, the all pluses, the biggest pluses you can see while using this. And the, the, there is a kind of uh, minor thing that, um, uh, that you, oh, sorry, uh, that you can see uh, is there is kind of no single view of what uh, other contract, uh, what other uh, teams um, are uh, are in into your uh, contract into your API. As for the other way, other version of contract testing is uh, you can uh, you can maybe heard about Spring Cloud contract. That's the provider driven contract testing, and the difference is uh, between provider and consumer is as you might guess that provider is a driver of all changes. Everything is else remains almost the same. There is still a contract, but uh, the, the other thing is there is no uh, pack broker. There is just, uh, so there, there is no middle layer like pack broker between uh, producer and consumer services. There, uh, in this case, you will have the some artifactory that you'll uh, keep all your stops. And uh, what by that I mean, let, let's say uh, everything remains the same, but back broker has gone, and you have an artifactory. So in CI/CD, uh, in your way you what you'll have you'll have uh, like person service let's that's the producer provider and uh, you have a couple of consumers that's like like uh, bank service letter service etc so what um from the beginning, you uh, let's say it's, this is the simplest scenario. Assuming that uh, the provider made some changes in the API and they modified the contract, and they would like to push the changes uh, and notify all all consumers about that. Uh, firstly, they um, verify, we need to verify that contract against uh, the producers. They, in this case, they push all uh, the, the team that is working on the person service, the provider, it pushes uh, all changes and they create a new uh, API and that will generate new stops. All st that will be, a, let's say, if Java, that's uh, the uh, jar file. And all that stops after the project will be uh, built on Jenkins, if you're using that, uh, it will, then you will push all that stops to the to your artifactory, and after after that, all pipelines that all, all other all consumer services that uses the person service, all pipelines you have for that services will be uh, triggered about that stop about the new version of that API in the artifactory as a stop, and they will trigger a build on, on that new version of jar file with that stops. And then the newest version of contract will be verified again each 
each consumer, each uh, consumer service. And if uh, contract testing fails, then the pipeline if uh, is able to notify their response team about that this failure, and that will let the uh, provider know that some consumers are not uh, happy with that, with that change, and they need to communicate with each other about that. That it's really pretty helpful because if you have a really distributed team uh, that is working that are working on different services not break your uh, your service uh, in a real life like for example let's say you have some even in the configuration part you have you did some change you did some field add some field or remove some field and everything has broken because uh, and you are not notified in this way you are. So this, come on, yeah. Uh, in producer driven contract testing, uh, you, you will see the beauty of, of uh, uh, like, the the beauty of uh, up to date or uh, changes that you as a producer are made uh, made for for your API uh, if you are writing the public API it really suits for this use case uh, because uh, you you you'll see that um, as a producer. Uh, all changes that you are doing uh, uh, will be made and uh, in the manner that uh, other services that uses your API are, um, are not breaking because of uh, new uh, something new that you are trying to add. Uh, so backward compatibility is not kind of thing that you will be uh, in rush or uh, not not safe about. The best best that the bad thing is uh, uh, it's kind of hard to use uh, for the consumers because like you have. Uh, you have the uh, the thing about as you are the owner of API and you you can um, uh, you can introduce some changes that uh, a lot of uh, consumers are not uh, uh, are not good with. So. Um, Let's, as a summary, um, if you remember the testing pyramid, uh, of course, the uh, consumer or provider driven contract testing are not the replacer for end to end tests because they, you are not spinning up the real scenario the, that user, the end user will go through. But with contract testing, you will be fast and you will be safe because uh, no matter what, on, if, if that producer or consumer uh, changes are made, each team will be notified about that. And you can agree with what changes uh, is necessary and what are not. And uh, that's sa that saves a lot of time for each side, for each team that is working either on service or provider side. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, guess if you have any questions, just let me know. So that, that was kind of uh, introduction to the consumer and provider-driven contract-driven tasks 
just for you to try and save a lot of time and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of time and money for for you and your, your project if you have a lot of uh, kind of big uh, interchangeable platform. Yep, that's pretty much it. <laughs>